guys. Hey. How is everybody? Are you waiting for them to respond? Or? I am. Okay. I am. We'll be here a minute. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm so, good. How are you? I'm good. Good, 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 good. Uh, we have a full week of recordings. Lots to Indeed. do. Because somebody has to go to fucking Europe for Christmas, so. There's that. I also have to, like, find time to wrap presents. Oh, God, I know. I know. Do other stuff, which is not awesome. I have to get stuff in the mail. I got... <sighs> Heard a lot of things. Irons. So many irons in fire. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and jump in um, to the episode uh evps let's go over those we only have a couple they're really super quick um the first one is that we did our investigation our podcast fan event uh at the 1910 jail in globe arizona last weekend so um we had a really great time laura and i as always do a mini episode recapping any location that we investigate and this one is no different except that we're going to record it live on Facebook. Um, hopefully it'll go better than Stanley Hotel Live did. I mean, I mean maybe. <laughs> We're going to try to. We don't really know what's going to happen. But. We're going to give it the old college try. Um, it should, because we're actually going to be doing it from our homes uh, here on the same platform that we use to record the show anyway so there won't be any cameras turning off unless you know somebody loses power or whatever um so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna be recording it live on um on facebook uh tuesday the 14th yes laura help me out sounds about right sure uh tuesday the 14th let me just look at a calendar to be sure Yes, at 6 p.m. Arizona time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So come on over, check it out. Again, it's a free event. It's going to be on our podcast Facebook page. We're going to um, show you some of the evidence that was captured. We, we had a really, really great time. So some audio, some video. And yeah, and then we're going to release it um, as we as we normally do, um, just, you know, as an impromptu mini episode. So um, that's the first thing. The second thing I want to say, we have a new Patreon of the week. And everybody give a standing ovation round of applause to Callie. Thank you so much for joining our Patreon. Welcome to the shit Thanks, show. Callie. And here is a round of applause for you. Yay! <laughs> I need to find that. I need to find that sound audio so that I can input it. I, we used to have a standing ovation. I think you doing it is much, much better. Much more personal. I think so. I agree. <laughs> um, so anyway, Callie, thank you so much. We're, we're very grateful for your generosity, and we're super excited to have you. Um, then uh, to that end, that's really all we have, guys, uh, for EVPs. Um, this episode is a listener suggestion. This was sent in to us by Emily. So, Emily, we are going to cover Laura Tedham. The McPike Mansion. Yay! In your old Yay. home state-ish, one of them, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> of... <laughs> it is one of them. Illinois. Or Illinois. Or Illinois. No Illinois. No Illinois. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Please, God, no Illinois. Um, it's not. Yeah, this is this is a really cool one. Um, it's it's sh real short, sweet, and to the point, but the history is phenomenal. The hauntings are pretty nuts. Uh, so, Laura, what are your sources? So, my sources are the McPikeMansion.com, Wikipedia.com, and OldHousesUnder50K.com. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm for sure. Up. Yeah, for sure. All right. So the McPike, Man McPike Mansion, it's going to be another one of those days, or Great. Mount Lookout is a mansion in Alton, which is part of the Metro East region of the greater St. Louis metropolitan area um, in the great state of Illinois. Great. Uh, so before we like jump into the mansion mansion stuff, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Alton. Okay. Alton is supposed to be the most haunted city in Illinois. Really? So, I mean, supposedly, I don't know. I think Chicago might have that. But that's what they say. 
So the town is located on the Mississippi River. Um, it is famous for its limestone bluffs. Oh, say no more. It's no. fucking the most right. haunted place in Illinois. <laughs> Here we go. Done. That's all you had to say. <laughs> right, and we're done. All right. Um, <laughs> It is also known for its role in the American Civil War. And okay. it was the site of the last Abraham Lincoln and Stephen Douglas debate in October of 1858. Oh, wow, that's cool. So, yeah. So, Alton became an important town for abolitionists. Okay. As Illinois was a free state across the Mississippi River from the slave state of Missouri. Um, so pro-slavery activists also lived there, and slave catchers. Slave, oh, there we go. Slave catchers would often raid the city. Slave um, caterers. Slave slaves, <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> Escaped slaves would cross the Mississippi to seek shelter in Alton, and proceed onward to safer places through stations of the Underground Railroad. So the railroad is said to go directly under McPike, um, but it's can't confirm or deny. Okay. Um, it was also rumored to be a stop, but we don't know that for sure. So during the years before the American Civil War, I don't think that that, that was a stop, but I mean somewhere right around there was a stop. Oh, okay. Okay, so where was I? Okay, so during the years before the American Civil War, um, several homes were equipped with tunnels and hiding places for stations on the Underground Railroad to okay. aid slaves escaping to the north. Okay. And they had so catering. On they had catering, of course. Of course. So, <laughs> on November 7th, 1837, the abolitionist printer, Reverend Elijah P. Lovejoy, was murdered by a pro-slavery mob while he tried to protect his Alton-based press from being destroyed for the third time. Jesus. Lovejoy thus became the first martyr of the abolition movement. Okay. All right. And this is what year? Did it say? 1837. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. So just two weeks into the American Civil War, Alton played a role in the infamous Camp Jackson affair. So the state of Missouri was neutral, um, but it was rumored that the governor was going to send their state militia to seize the like the arsenal that was in St. Louis. Okay. So the Secretary of War for the North, Simon Cameron, ordered his soldiers to evacuate the majority of the arms and take them to Illinois. Oh, okay. So 21,000 guns were secretly evacuated to Alton on the evening of April 29th, 1861. Casual. Nobody noticed. Nobody noticed. Right across the river. Right. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. Yeah, it is pretty um, cool. Yeah. I mean, in, in right? 1861, so, you could do that. Today, yeah. not so much. <laughs> not now. Not now. Nobody can be sneaky <laughs> ever. <laughs> right. Um, the first penitentiary in Illinois was built in Alton. Um there's only like a tiny bit of it that remains near the river that bumps uh, me out real hard the american civil war pardon that bumps me out real hard you know i love a good no. civil war penitentiary <laughs> you really do i really do <laughs> that's not even a joke <laughs> she's not being facetious at all she's like god damn it damn it thanks I'm now on the list now i'm depressed <laughs> Um, so during, you're going to be real depressed when I tell you this. Great. During the American Civil War, Union forces used it to hold prisoners of war, and some 12,000 Confederates were held there. Okay. So during the small pa smallpox ep epidemic, Jesus Christ, I'm never going to, I can't talk today. It's the same thing that's been going on. I'm like, blah, 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 my tongue tied. <laughs> um, so during the smallpox epidemic, um, an estimated 1,500 to 2,200 men died. Oh, God. A Confederate mass grave on the north side of Alton holds many of the dead from the epidemic, and a memorial marks the site. Often wow. when Confederate prisoners escaped, they tried to cross the Mississippi River back to the slave state of Missouri. So it's a pretty interesting town. There's a lot of stuff that happened, a lot of blood spilt. Um, All over the limestone. You get the limestone, you got the river. So there's a lot of stuff kind of already going on here. Yeah, it like so. It doesn't sound like anything was good except for the catering, right? Except for the catering, the slave catering. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Go now. <laughs> I, I have a fruit basket waiting for me. I believe that. All right. So on to the mansion. Okay. Uh, oh right, I forgot what we were talking. I forgot that the the house was the <laughs> topic. Right. Was, we're going to the house now. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, so it's said to be either Italianate or Second Empire. 
um, in style. Oh, well, let me um, show it. It is nestled among gnarled oak trees towering over oh. Alton from atop Mount Lookout, the highest point in town. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's take a look at it. Now, this is a picture of it today, right. so it's not... Imagine it in its splendor as Laura describes it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I lied. That is what it looked like in its heyday. I was like, it looks pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I literally never know what I'm going to fucking call up with these buttons and shit, guys. So, yay. I, I won this one. <laughs> right? Yeah. Anyway, go on. Okay. So, built in 1869, the McPike Mansion was designed by architect Lucas Pfeifenberger. I can say that. For Henry Guest <laughs> McPike and his family as their 15-acre country property. The Red Brick Mansion was one of the largest and most extravagant and regal private dwellings in Alton at this time. It's it gorgeous. 16 rooms. Yeah, it really is. 16 rooms, 11 marble fireplace, um, intricately carved staircase, beautifully carved trim bordering, borders um, you know, for the ceiling, and a vaulted wine cellar, which would be extravagant even now. I mean, it's what I've got. So, right. but you know, I mean, we've come a long way in 2020. Right. All everything I do is extra. 100%. I believe and that. All the marble. I know that forever. Right, yeah, all the marble is actually in my wine cellar and um yeah. The fireplaces yeah, are made people, of brick. Like people drive by carries. It's like who lives there the pope? I mean, we're like this and he loans me money. Right. You wish. <laughs> I don't even think I know his Have name. Have you ever seen the SNL skit? It's like a random one. <laughs> I think it's so funny. If they're talking about marble columns. Get marble columns for your house. And they're all like Jersey accent. And they're going to be like, who's the people are going to drive by your house? And be like, who lives there? The Pope? <laughs> oh, yeah, no. no. It's so stupid, <laughs> but it's so funny. I, haven't, I do not know that one, no. Well, it's kind of a random one. It's stuck at, it sticks in my head, though, cause I, probably because I'm Catholic. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even remember his name. Who? The, the Pope. Pope Francis? Pope Francis! Thank you. You're welcome. I like him. Um, so, in the prime of the house, uh, the grounds were adorned with lush gardens and orchards, home to rare trees, plants, and shrubs. Oh. So, Mr. McPike was the first owner, and he was a local businessman horticulturist secretary treasurer and mayor of alton wow at okay the age of 60 yeah this was a busy guy uh and it also 60, explains all of the trees and stuff right yeah uh, mick pike married the 32 years younger eleanor jane nelly moreland uh this was his third marriage his not, first wife died and the second marriage ended in divorce not judging no henry no. and nelly lived in this uh their country home with their daughter um it just says her name is Moreland. Um, but McPike had six grown children by his other wives, uh, but they appeared to have lived elsewhere. Hmm. Um, after Henry's death in 1910 at his home, the McPike family continued to reside in the mansion until 1936, at which time Nellie and Moreland relocated to Denver, Colorado. Okay. Interesting first so, name. Yeah, I was like, I don't think that's... I think they just have her last, na last name. I don't know. Okay. Um, so Henry was a close friend of Abraham Lincoln's. Oh. And he sat on the podium during the Lincoln-Douglas debate that was held in Alton that we talked about earlier. Right. Um, he was also with Lincoln in Springfield when the telegram arrived informing Lincoln of his election to the presidency. Wow. I know. Cool, huh? That's really cool, yeah. So, yeah. So Mr. McPike was... A, a real estate developer he owned a box manufacturing company again he was mayor and he was a horticulturist and there's these um they call them Ma the mcpike grape he developed there on the grounds of that property um and the grape ended up becoming patented and became famous for the wine that was produced from it the grapes are supposed to be like super big right i mean he should be your fucking hero he is already Right? I'm sure that you can make I, grapes that make more wine. Oh my god! I'm sure <laughs> Franzia uses these grapes. I'm sure they do. That's how they get them in the box. They got to fill up a box. It's very big. Cheers, Mr. Alton. Um, Thank you for your service. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, the mansion was then sold to Peter Lakinger. Um, he was a factory superintendent, and his wife, mm. Florence, um, was there also, and she lived... Uh, that was in 1938. And then his wife, Florence, well, she was there also. <laughs> she was doing stuff. <laughs> she was allowed. <laughs> um, at that time, the house was valued at $4,000. Um, Shit! In the 38s. I'm sure that's like a million or something. Probably. So, their two adult stepsons also lived with them and told of strange events. Um... So this kind of started, seems like it, what you're going to talk about started back in the day. So, Which was a Wednesday, it, as I've said before. Right. It was a Wednesday. It was a Wednesday. All good things start on Wednesdays. <laughs> uh, in 1945, Mr. Lickinger died relatively young at the age of 59. Okay. His family continued on at the mansion for 10 years, but it lay vac- vacant from the 50s well into the 90s. Yeah. Um, neglect, weather, vandals. Um Turned the mansion from what it was, yeah, into what it is today. Um, in 1994, Sharon and George Lutke purchased the mansion, undertaking its restoration with the hopes of turning it into a bed and breakfast. I am um, so I glad that you restored. said their name first. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with that. Thanks, um, Lutke. I know that they have restored the front patio, and it looks <laughs> really awesome. And I know that they're working on the rest. Um, yeah, by let's, finding tours and such, but it's in pretty bad shape. It still. is. Let's take a look. Yeah, that would have been gorgeous so, at one time. Look yeah, that. so that was the grand staircase. Look at that! Isn't that that's just so unfortunate? Yeah, it really is. It's just so unfortunate. There's so many. Hold on. Like I know around the big um, automotive and steel towns throughout the Midwest, there's, you know, where manufacturing was huge. They had these great, big, beautiful houses. That mm-hmm. are, yeah. A lot of them are like this now, and it's just sad. Yeah, you know, every now and then, my, my friend Takuma lives um, in Chicago, and mm-hmm. every now and then he, you know, him and his family are looking to like rent a house and every now and then he sends me listings on Zillow of these amazing brownstones or these amazing houses and they're kind of like this and they need a Mm -hmm. lot of work but they are you know fifty thousand dollars or less and I mean and that's around like in Chicago area and the surrounding areas so um but you can see here there's you know these rooms you can tell they they were once really ornate really beautiful I'm not sure what this Mm -hmm. circle thing is I'm it's clear the the camera was on the floor so I'm not entirely sure what this thing is Mm -hmm. to the right Uh, fire place yeah something weird anyway um really stunning but it is in it is in tremendous tremendous disrepair Mm -hmm. which is a nice way to put it that is a very nice way to put it yeah anyway sorry (laughs) that's okay that's the history oh that's the history great i love it it. i love it and you know i'm a big fan fan Mm -hmm. Great. It's contagious, I'm telling you. Now you passed it on to me. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know I am a big fan of saving buildings that are of historical value and worth. Um, mm-hmm. And this one is no different. Um, so, uh, it, but it is haunted as fuck, um, which makes it even more worth saving because whether um, you believe in it or not, um to us in the paranormal community, we do believe that these locations are the the spirits that haunt them. This is their home. So it's, you know, it's, it's really heartbreaking to see buildings get lost to time with nobody to care for them. Um, I think it's wonderful that these folks have bought it. And um, I talk a little bit about the work that they're, they're trying to do um, with it and Mm -hmm. um the experiences that they've had and i love people that do this i love people that see a building that was so important to the town um that Mm -hmm. it's in to the to the to the state that it's in um and and go in and and do everything that they can to try and to try and save it and and restore it so i think that that's really great i have seen those pictures you talked about about the front Mm -hmm. porch they i mean they really are working um hard and all of the money that they they earn through tours and stuff like that goes back into the 
the building, which is phenomenal. So, um, the hauntings. Uh, let's get into those. So, my sources this week are STL Today, NPI Web, STL Today, NPI Web, and HauntedIllinoisAll.com. Um, so, like you said, the family um, originally lived in the mansion until 1936. It did change hands several times um, and sat vacant from the 1950s until the, what'd you say, Ludix? Lud Ludkies? Lud Ludkies. Ludkies. Um, yeah. This fabulous couple, that's what we're going to call them. This <laughs> fabulous couple uh, bought it in 1994. Um, both of the... Um, members of the fabulous couple uh, <laughs> retire they are retired physical education teachers and they have moved actually moved into a smaller house next door to the mansion so that they can keep in cl a closer eye on it they have poured over two hundred thousand dollars into its restoration so far and as you can see from the pictures that i showed you guys this place is in need of so much so much work um right. so if you're unable to get to alton to tour it because you can tour it like laura said um you mm -hmm. can donate to it so maybe consider that um right. so from the 1400 confederate soldiers dying in alton during the civil war due to a small pox outbreak in a prison uh to the many ghosts of the mcpike mansion alton has spirits to spare thanks to the long history and detailed history that laura just went over with us um the geography of alton may also be a contributing factor in making the city a paranormal hotspot. uh there are three theories about the hauntings said sharon wife of the fabulous couple um <laughs> we're gonna call her sharon from now on um she says that one is that they want to be there that's one of the three theories about the hauntings of this particular mansion one they want to be there henry um mcpike he wants to be there because it was his house he had stayed partially because of his wife and um you know but mainly because it was his house like you said she was kind of like allowed there um mm -hmm. and this sentence sort of lends credence <laughs> to that um but it was his house and he loved it which is why he still haunts it to this day uh there is a theory that something traumatic happened um to somebody in the house and they lingered on um but as far as her research and in, in the into the history of the location she doesn't she hasn't found anything that anything traumatic happened there but it's still a potential theory. Mm -hmm. So um, then there's a theory that they have unfinished business. Um, there is some unfinished business with one of the spirits. What it is, she does not know. Um, as far as Alton itself, uh, they are near the river. Um, and so as we all know, we've talked about it a ton on this show, spirits have to have a way of um, obtaining and using energy. So running water, that is a wonderful conductor of energy um, for everything, including spirits. Um, there's also, like Laura said, a lot of limestone in Alton, um, and limestone holds a lot of energy as well. So have those two. We've almost got the trifecta. If we had a traumatic event, Laura, we would have the haunting trifecta. Limestone. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the traumatic event, water, done. Boom. It's haunted. And that is my part. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> and that is it. And good night. Good night. We hope you enjoyed it. Emily, thank you for the recommendation. Um no. So a guy named Eric Lavelle, um, with the help of his daughter, Claire, they have been restoring the home's rotting facade, flooring, roof, windows, things like that. And he mm -hmm. says, quote, I've learned from the dead. I learned from the guys who did it. I tore some of this stuff out and thought I could replicate that. Um, the dead have also um, made themselves known to them as they're restoring the house, um, as far as... Oh, wow not like don't do this do that kind of like they'll they'll put something up and then it'll just randomly fall down and and, and things like that <laughs> like that don't like that there and we don't like this one that's kind of the ghost i would be mm, that doesn't look good i don't <laughs> take it down do it over um the dead have also helped with the restoration at least indirectly and this kind of goes back to what i was talking about a minute ago um the thought of a ghostly encounter has drawn thousands of people to the McPike Mansion over the years. And mm -hmm. the fabulous couple have established a network of friends who give tours and help at campouts. Um, they have, because 
the building is condemned, you actually can't go inside. And you can see why it's condemned through the pictures I just showed you. Um, but because it's condemned, you can't go inside. The only part of the house that you can go in is the wine cellar. It's the only part of the house that is structurally sound. So they hold campouts, like overnight kind of investigations, but you're camping out on the property, which I think is actually kind of cool. I think it sounds fun. If I liked camping. <laughs> it's a haunted location, so I might give it a shot. Maybe. You would do it. I would do it, especially just to be like, I'm sure the grapes of my wine came here from here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, people have said they heard footsteps, a murmured conversations, the sound of children laughing, orbs and odd wisps of light appear in photos, and a paranormal research groups frequent the house and pick up voices on recording equipment all the time. So like I said, the house is condemned, so they can't give tours inside, but you can peek in the doors, windows, step onto the porch that you mentioned that they have mm -hmm. restored. Um, and you can have a session with a medium in the wine cellar, um, where apparently spirits like to make themselves known, Apparent, which makes sense. I mean, if people can't go in the house, the only place mm -hmm. they can go is the wine cellar, where are the spirits going to go? Especially if there's a medium there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus, so. like, why wouldn't you be in the wine cellar anyway? Right. All the good grapes are there. <laughs> right. Um, so Sharon believes that there are about 10 spirits that live in the house and each has a name, some that they've given to the spirits and some that belong to former residents or relatives. Um, so Sharon was actually giving an, a TV interview a couple of years mm -hmm. ago and she told the reporter, I'm getting a chill right now, which tells me that's my sign to introduce you to Lydia. Um, Lydia apparently was Henry McPike's mom who didn't live in the house, but does like to make her presence known in it, which I thought was pretty okay. cool. I mean, if Koi had a mansion, I'd do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm coming to visit. I'm coming to visit. Um, Sharon says she has seen the ghost of Henry McPike who wears a dark or appears who wears a dark shadow. He just throws that shadow on and out he goes um he appears as a dark shadow and sometimes wears a coat <laughs> <laughs> uh, he has appeared in the front window in one photo so she says that the use of copper dowsing rods to ask the spirits yes or no questions um, tends to yield the best responses and visitors can see them in action during a tour um one uh paranormal group had been using them and asked Henry McPike, do you like that the fabulous couple are restoring this mm -hmm. house and the rods moved inward and indicating yes. Um, do you think it will be ready for their anniversary in 2021? Another yes. Are you going to be at their party? Another yes. Um, mm -hmm. So those are interesting. I know a lot of paranormal investigators that use dowsing rods, and I definitely want to try it. Um, I think I might, you know, pick up a pick up a pair and, and see how that goes in some of our investigations. Um, but Sharon said that one day she had been gardening in the front yard when she spied a man in old fashioned attire staring down at her from a window. Not creepy at all. Especially, you know, she knew the, you know, the state of the house. Yeah, there's nobody in there. Right. right. They'd fall through the floor. A thousand percent. The two locked eyes for a moment before he disappeared. And after doing some research, she found a photo of Paul Lasinger, Likinger, that guy, wearing similar clothing mm -hmm. as the guy she saw standing upstairs looking down at her. Okay. Um, yeah. It actually wasn't the only strange occurrence at the McPike Mansion. Um, visitors would go on to tell um, of spotting strange mists and orbs, uh, some of those things appearing in photos and video. They would feel the sensation of being touched, smell phantom lilac perfume, which was thought to be the presence of a former servant named Sarah Wells. Um, more on her in a minute. But they've also said they've heard metal doors scraping across the floor on their own, which I can't seem to, I can't really imagine what metal door that could be in a mansion. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose if you have all the money in the world, just make all the doors metal, whatever. Um, again, the wine cellar seems to be the epicenter for paranormal activity. Um, psychic mediums report a feeling of a surge of energy in the basement, even sensing the presence of Henry McPike himself. So back to Sarah, the spirit, um, 
uh, she was a little more than a present than a presence with an assumed name until a man came by the house one day and presented the fabulous couple with some books that he had removed from the house 17 years before one of the books had the name sarah wells written inside of it so since that time sharon has actually she's been touched which actually she was hugged um by this spirit and she and her husband have occasionally caught the scent of lilac on the third floor so obviously they own it they can go wherever they want they probably know which steps are not going to fall in um don't go into this house guys you're not allowed yeah, don't try it it's not safe you're gonna mess it up mm-hmm. you'll just make it all worse um so one investigation managed to pick up a curious event that is actually worthy of mention so when the entire group was w- gathered in the wine cellar of the house a step down below the basement Um, one of the group members became uncomfortable in the small enclosed space and asked to go upstairs. She was accompanied upstairs by another woman who was present and soon the group in the cellar was waiting patiently for them to return. After a few moments, the sound of the second woman's footsteps could be heard descending the steps, then descending, descending, nope descending the basement (laughs) stairs thanks for that um the basement stairs and then crossing the basement floor um the steps were followed by a short pause and then the metal door to the wine cellar opened scraping across the stone floor as it did so there was only one problem there was actually nobody there both of the women who were who left were still upstairs and no one had come down the steps the entire strange incident was Mm -hmm. captured on videotape unfortunately i could not find it oh wow but it sounds crazy right cool though yeah Mm -hmm. i like that so um that's what i have on the hauntings guys they're kind of small simply because you you can't go into the whole place um i do want to say that emily who is the is the wonderful listener that uh suggested this location she had an experience there herself and i asked her if i could share it she said that i could so here is what she wrote about 15 years ago i was pregnant at the time we all went into the basement and the guide told us to turn off our flashlights while she called the ghost down me being me i said hell no (laughs) (laughs) so i got told i could wait in another room of the basement by myself (laughs) that wasn't going to happen so i opted to have my fiance wrap his arms around my stomach while i held his hands in a circle while i held hands in a circle All the lights were off and the girl across from me started screaming hysterically that something was touching her stomach. Um, So they turned their flashlights on and they all flew upstairs. When they got back outside, they found that there was a perfectly bleached circle in the middle of her black sweatshirt where she said it felt like somebody was touching her stomach. That's weird. It's super creepy. Um, Apparently, there's also a room on the third floor they call the sick room. Um, There I got my hair pulled, so I was already creeped out before we went to the basement. So maybe you can go to the third floor. I thought the whole thing was condemned. So maybe you can go to the third floor. So she had her hair pulled um, in that room before they went to the basement. She can't say for certain if it was her fiance just messing with her. So she actually doesn't bring it up that often. Um, So thank you for letting me tell it on our podcast because now everyone knows (laughs) (laughs) um she did say that her sister's friend was also a cop in alton and has gotten called to that had gotten called to the house on a different occasion uh when he got back to the station he wouldn't tell anyone what he saw and as far as she knows he still hasn't told anyone what happened there but he said that he if he ever got sent back out to the house he'd turn in his badge and walk out wow that's quite telling if you ask me Mm mm-hmm just because it's a cop like it, it's mm-hmm. not just like you you can apply for a cop's position on you know zip recruiter and then be like sure you're hired you've got to go through a lot to become a cop so mm-hmm. to just be like i'm good thanks for the experience bye yeah so that's uh that's what i have on the hauntings of the mcpike mansion you guys i definitely think it's worth checking out if you're in the area of alton illinois um what do you think Laura? Yeah, by st louis yeah. Oh, I meant to show you. I'm so sorry. I have a picture to show you guys. Now, as everybody knows, I wholeheartedly believe in the paranormal. I know that it's real. Um, and I, I love it. I'm a professional paranormal investigator. So I hunt these ghosts as often as I can. So when I see something like this, I 
that makes me kind of take a step back. Um, let me show it to you, Laura. Let's have a look at this and see your thoughts on it. Um, okay. Here we go. So this is a photograph that was taken of the McPike Mansion by somebody. Um, and in it, you can see the windows and the side, one side of the building. And mm -hmm. I see what they're doing here. They have, so the picture is colored, but they've made mm -hmm. the ghostly images black and white. And I get why they did it. Um, mm -hmm. But to me, I'm not buying this photograph. I don't either. There's just, for one, that seems like far too many. Two, they're almost... <laughs> they... There's so many. There's one, two, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine uh, right. in it. Um, but it, it's also, they kind of look like comical ghosts. I think the mm -hmm. only one that looks legit is the one on the upper left side. Like maybe that might be Mr. McPike. But again, the placement of, I, I just, I'm not, if I took this, if I was presented with this picture from, um, we get a lot of groups that, that want to partner with us, that, that reach out to us for consultation and ask us about our opinion on evidence that they've captured. I would not. I would not put, I would not buy this. This particular photo looks photoshopped. Yeah, it looks real weird. But it is one that I consistently found in all of my research for paranormal photographs of this place. Mm. And I'm like, what is up with it? So what are your immediate thoughts? It doesn't look real. Mm -hmm. Like... It's super weird. And what's it, going on with the one on the bottom right? Like, it, it, like they're not even in the window. Yeah. Like, they're just out of the window, but it's just like a head just kind of floating out of the window. Like, maybe their Photoshop wasn't that good. They couldn't get rid of, like, the background in that one. Maybe. It looks kind of arbitrary. Um, it's super weird. Like, it's kind mm -hmm. of in the middle of the window frame. Like, right. Like, it's not inside the window. Like, the other ones look like they're inside. Right. This one just looks like it's a head floating. Mm hmm. Oh. And there's just so many ghosts. There's just so many. Besides that. It's like the fucking Portraits family. It, it is. <laughs> it, it is. Like, Trans Allegheny has a ton of ghosts, but this is just far too many. I don't like. Right. Uh, anyway. All, Come on, kids, let's get a picture. No. Right. Yeah, so. Um, it, I wouldn't have included it, except that it just kept coming up. And I'm like, all right, let's talk about this one for a minute. Like I said, I get what they were doing with making the photographs black and white. They're easier to see if it was a color mm -hmm. picture. Um, but no, no, if I was, if somebody showed me this and said, Carrie, what do you think? I would be like, you need to burn that right now because that is not evidence. Sorry. Right. That's garbage. That's garbage. Um... But, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe there are that many there, and maybe that's just what they felt like were staring at them. I don't know, and they're trying to just, I don't know. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, that's what we have, guys, on the McPike Mansion. This was a, a short episode, but, man, was it chock full of really fun, historical, and haunting goodness. Um, to that end, Laura, why don't you tell everybody where they can find us, follow us, stalk us. Don't stalk us. I'm kidding. You can find us on the Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And you can also follow us on TikTok at HOAH Podcast, at HOAH Carrie, and at HOAH Co host Laura. Yes, you sure can. And how are you doing with your TikToks, miss? Um, did I mention I got new furniture today? <laughs> I've been so busy with my new furniture. I've had to TikTok your cat. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're missing Adam. He's very funny. He's so, so funny. Photogenic. He's the sweetest, most adorable cat, but he's a he's a kitten. And man, it, we were kind of, well, Laura and I, Zane not so much, running around after that cat <laughs> when I was there this past weekend. Dude. He's so, so he broke my favorite mug yesterday. Because yeah. he's one of those cats. I've never had a cat that actually did this before. Clearly people... Talk about how they do this. I mean, there's memes about it. Of mine. Yeah. He is the cat that likes to just look at shit and push it off the shelf or whatever, the table, whatever. <laughs> I've never had a cat that really did that. Like, I set down my coffee because it was cold. 
onto the counter. I went to do something else in the room and I was gonna come back and heat it up, you know? And uh, yeah, I heard a crash. So he jumped up there and was like, boop. And that's the second thing he's broken like a, a few yeah. days. So yeah, the shot glass was the first super one. Super mindful. Mm-hmm. I have yeah. to be super mindful of where I put stuff because he will just knock it over. Well, it's not like you can put it high up because we watched him basically climb to the ceiling this weekend. Right. So he's fun. Um, he is the best, but he's so sweet and so loving and just he loves to be petted and he loves to lick you and he's just he loves to cuddle and purrs like so like a jet engine. Um, yes, he does. He's wonderful. He's really wonderful. So um, I hope you stick I it out with him. I with somebody recently and they're like, are you petting your cat? <laughs> You're like, no, he's in the living room. Because <laughs> all you can hear is his loud ass purr. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Funny. I'm like, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't even have a cat. <laughs> There's no cats here. That's what are you? I sound. You're in, I'm just no. really happy to talk to you. I'm really happy to talk to you. <laughs> How do you know that's not me? Um... <laughs> Anyway, so that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, Laura and I have lots more to record, so we, here is where we leave you. Oh, wait. I think Zane wants to say hi. What? I found some new kids to play with, so I'm going to play with them, okay? Okay, we have to leave in a minute. Oh, my God. I'm so glad that he's making friends in the neighborhood, but also, it's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Every five minutes. Mom, mom, mom. Um... Yes, I'm so my friends. to that end, Zane has five minutes to play with his friends because they have to go somewhere. Uh, so we're going to let Laura go so she can go and wrangle her child and her cat. And uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. Please, if you're listening on Saturday, the day this episode drops, please tune in on Tuesday the 14th at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time to watch us as we record our fifth mini episode live on Facebook. We're going to be recapping the 1910 jail event, which um, had so many surprises in store. I still can't wrap my head around it. So thank you so much, guys. We love you as always. Stay safe out there because you never know who or what is listening. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. <laughs>